Coach Brandon here, and today I'll be talking about the glycemic index. Our body's blood glucose response to certain carbohydrates is a very important indicator of health as we age. Anybody that's studied nutrition or been educated in any classes knows what's better, brown rice or white rice. Everybody say it with me, brown rice. Same thing with white bread versus whole grain bread or anything of that nature. And the reason this is because we're trying to minimize our body's blood sugar spikes after we are eating, uh, as we're eating carbohydrates. Um, now it's been pretty much set in stone for a while that it, it is how it is. The glycemic index is somewhat set in stone and our body's reactions to carbohydrates is very similar between person to person. But recent studies have found this may not be quite as true as we once thought. Uh, recently done one that was actually the biggest blood glucose response uh, study ever to be done with a thousand participants and tested 50,000 meals. Uh, the results of this study was very interesting. There is little to no consistency across the board to people's response to carbohydrates. Uh, I'll give you a few examples here. The same person ate the same meal on different days, they have the same exact response, or at the very least, a very similar one. When, the, uh, when two different people ate a, uh, the same meal, they would have a very different response. Now, take a step further, some individuals had a larger blood glucose spike to brown rice than they did white bread. For some people, white bread elicited little to no response whatsoever, which kind of blows away any preconceived notion that we had about how our bodies react to uh, carbohydrates. Now, it, take, it goes a step further. Some individuals spiked higher in blood sugar to brown rice and quinoa than they did to ice cream. Again, blows your mind away in terms of if you've been educated in nutrition, this is kind of exact opposite of what we've been taught. Now the reason this is, is for several different indicators, including fitness level, microbiome, and a big part of it is genetics, which is why the field of nutrigenomics has been blowing up so much lately because of the wide amount of variability person to person when doing the same diet. Now the study of nutrigenomics is the relationship between nutrition or diet and a person's genetics that explains said differences. Now we can also take this a step further by looking at the ketogenic diet. You'll find that some individuals uh, when on the ketogenic diet actually have detrimental responses to it and no success whatsoever. Now this isn't because they never hit ketosis because they're not working hard enough or whatever it may be. This is actually because some individuals lack the PPAR alpha gene that allows a, your body to use fat as energy proficiently and produce ketones. If you do not have this gene, the ketogenic diet will be a terrible one for you. Which again shows that the, there's a wide amount of variability from person to person when looking at nutrition. So if we're irresponsibly um, just telling each and every person to use a diet that worked for you, that may not be a good idea. Someone might have a detrimental uh, response to a diet that worked very well for your client or yourself. Which goes to show that not everything's black and white. There's a lot of gray area in nutrition and there's still a lot of things that we don't quite understand. Uh, so when it comes to glycemic index, again, nothing's really set in stone and the only objective way to find out how somebody's body responds to certain carbohydrates is to set them up with a blood glucose reader for about a week and see what carbohydrates elicit what responses. Thing about covers it for this topic, it's Brandon Warren signing up.